Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Clements, the Ecology and Natural Resources Educator at University of Florida IFAS Extension, Sarasota County. And I am here to share the LIFE program with you, Learning in Florida's Environment. And in this episode, we are at Culver House Community Garden in Sarasota County, and we are going to be talking about what plants need and gardening in Florida. So let me ask all of you out there, what do plants need? Think about habitat. Habitat is the environment in which you live in and all living organisms, plants, animals, even us humans, we need specific things from our habitat. Usually all things need water, food, and shelter or space in which to live and grow. So plants need those things, but plants need something else. They also need, can you guess? You're right, the sunlight because plants use nutrients from the soil, water, and sunlight to photosynthesize. Photosynthesis is the process of making their own food. That's super cool. I wish I could just stand here and make my own food, but I can't. I have to get it from the grocery store. All right, but Mindy Hannock, who is our gardens coordinator here at Sarasota County Extension, she is going to talk to you about growing your own edible food, food you can eat right at your own home in your own garden. All right, let's go meet up with Mindy. Hi, my name is Mindy Hannock, and I am the garden coordinator for UF IFAS Sarasota County Extension. And we are here today in one of our community gardens. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what it takes to be a successful gardener in Florida. Um, and so when you're growing, uh, especially growing edible crops in Florida, it's important to take a few different things into consideration. Um, usually you're gonna want as close to eight hours of good sunlight as you can get there are some plants that can tolerate six hours or less. Um, you're gonna take into consideration our seasons uh, because what you can plant at a certain time of year will vary, but we're very fortunate in Florida that you can almost garden year round if you choose to. So just as humans need you know, food and water, your plants need nutrients and they're usually pulling those from the soil, but we do have the benefit of some nitrogen fixing crops that can actually pull some of those from the atmosphere and help put them back into the soil. Another way that you can help build organic matter into your soil so you have nutrients for your plants is composting. And what the compost can do is it does help add organic matter back to your soil. If you can see behind me, there are sunflowers growing and it's really wonderful to have plants in your garden space that are good for pollinators. Um, some of your vegetable plants need cross pollination for you to be able to get uh, fruit or vegetables from them. And so you wanna have pollinators like bees and butterflies that can take that pollen from one plant to another and they love plants like sunflowers. So um, those are something to consider having in your garden too. In this garden, because there is space for it, there are some fruit trees and Florida, you're talking about learning in Florida's environment, Florida is excellent for fruit trees. It's, you're probably very familiar. There's a lot of citrus that grows in Florida, but you can also grow some other fruit trees too. And one of the things that you see behind me is actually a star fruit and you can see some of the fruits up in the tree and the reason they get that name is when you look at the bottom of them and you slice them they actually look like stars you'll see a cistern behind me because this garden is pretty cool in that it actually has a solar powered well system to provide the water and water is really important if you're going to garden because a lot of our vegetable crops are grown during our dry season. Thank you so much for visiting with me in the garden today. So just as a reminder, when you garden, you want to have access to water, sunlight, uh, pay attention to your season. So you're putting your plant out, not only in the right place, but at the right time of year, um, that you have some space so that they can root out and, and have some airflow because it's hot and humid and they want a little bit of air just like we do. So we are here today to show you how to take green onions uh, from your kitchen and be able to grow more green onions at home so that way you have even more green onions to use um, and that can help uh, save a little bit on the kitchen budget. So we have green onion here 
and I'm going to show you two ways that you can grow them. You can do it in water and you'll actually start to see regrowth within four days and you can also do that in soil and the ones that I'm going to put in soil I'm going to cut and leave a little bit longer. The ones I'm going to put in water I'm going to do a little shorter. So the benefit to the soil would be if you're wanting to keep your green onions growing longer so you can cut off of them um, more than one or two times. Uh, whereas the water, after a while, you'll notice that you're not going to be getting as much regrowth because there isn't the nutrient here for it to pull. So about half to an inch, I'm going to put in water. So I'm going to come up here where you see a little bit of green and I'm going to make a cut. And one of the things that's important when you're picking out your onions at the store or the produce stand is you're looking for some onions that have roots left on them because that's important. And then you're, I don't want to drown them. So if I put them in here, it's too much water. So I'm actually going to dump some of that out and I'll use that to moisten the soil. You want the tops to be able to be at the surface. And you can see that the roots are in the water. Now I would recommend, I'm outside today, but I would recommend cleaning your green onion a little bit before you do this. So that way your water has a little bit of a cleaner start because you're gonna leave it in that water for a few days and then change out your water. And the rest of these I can use in tonight's dinner. Now for the green onion that I'm going to plant in the soil here, you'll notice that the container is large enough to accommodate the plants that I'm going to put in there. And also, most importantly, this container has drainage holes uh, because just like plants like to be watered, they do want to drain. Um, and so that's important. And I have a nice quality uh, potting soil here. So I'm going to leave a little bit longer on my green onion. And I tend to plant with my bare hands. So I want to make sure that I'm putting the roots down in here and covering it up. Might go even a little bit deeper. I'm gonna give each of them a little bit of room. Some of our community gardeners actually um, grow their green onions in plots like this and they just prune off of them as they need to uh, for their cooking and after a couple seasons they'll just replace them. So you can also repurpose um, your plastic uh, and use this to water so if I had delicate seeds in here, it's gonna make it so I'm not splashing my seeds everywhere. And so I'll also set this in a sunny place um, and keep it watered and you should start to see new growth coming out of your green onions. So here's a picture of my green onions five days after I planted them. And here's a picture eight days after planting. Isn't it cool how fast they grow? like you can try regrowing other vegetables from kitchen scraps you can go ahead and uh, grow carrot um, you can grow uh, green onion uh, you can grow uh, ginger uh, you can also uh, take some herbs and get them to root out in water as well and if you're going to be using any sharp instruments make sure that you have your parents handy to help you so one of the other things that you can do with the scraps in your kitchen is you can also um, do art projects. And so if you like to use celery at home and maybe you're not using the bottom part of your celery, you can actually take it and use that as part of your art projects. And it's basically a free stamp, if you will. And so I'm gonna rub it in some of this yellow paint and I can create art with it. And you can make it like a bouquet of roses. 
Thank you, Mindy. Those were such great activities you shared with us. And I hope those of you at home watching are going to try some of those fun activities and get ready to experiment with growing your own food here in Florida. So maybe you have a large enough area that you actually have a garden and you can start a garden with your family. Or you might be able to do raised beds like we have here at our University of Florida IFAS Extension Demonstration Garden. So here we have one that we're getting ready to plant in. And behind me is one that has some plants currently growing in it. We have some yummy, delicious, spicy peppers in that one. So if you want to start plants for your very own garden, you of course could buy them already started at the store or you can get seeds and start them yourself. We even have seeds available to the public for free here at Sarasota County Extension. Right now we have collard greens, which are a really yummy green vegetable, and you can pick them up with information and a package of seeds. So what I did the other day is I got some of our collard green seeds and I decided to start them because some plants will not just start from putting seeds right into the soil. Some plants you have to start or germinate. Germinate is the fancy scientific word for sprouting them before you put them in soil. So this is really simple. I just took a plastic Ziploc bag from my kitchen. I put a wet paper towel in there and then I put the collard green seeds and they're really tiny and you won't be able to see I don't think on the video but there's one right here that's already sprouted and I did this two days ago. When you do this at home it's good to label your bag with the type of plant you're sprouting because you may want to do different types of plants and I put the date. You can see this was for me just two days ago and we already have one sprouting or germinating. So sometimes it only takes five to 10 days before you have one ready to transfer into soil. So my next step could be that I could start them in the garden now or in my pot if I don't have enough room for a garden, but I can also put my little seedling, my little sprouted seed right here into these egg cartons. Sometimes this is a great place to start seeds and you don't even use the paper or the plastic bag. So this is a great way to reuse these uh, egg cartons. This one is styrofoam and isn't recycled. So I try to stay away from these because we can't recycle them. I like the paper ones better, but you just put some soil in there you can put one or two seeds in each of these little egg cups. Don't forget the water because we all know that plants need nutrients from the soil, water, space to grow, and they also need sunlight to make their own food. So then you want to put your plastic bag with seeds or your egg carton with seeds by a window in your house so that they get plenty of sun. So, I hope you're gonna start experimenting with growing your own edible foods, foods that you can eat in your very own garden. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Life and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Bye-bye.